I'm Karen. Welcome to the Seasons of Living. This morning it is really early and it's cold and Mr. Roofer is going to show us a very important skill that I need to learn as well to learn to start, start a fire in the wood cook stove. And he is an expert in old-fashioned living. He grew up really old-fashioned in uh, Texas uh, German culture. And you are not going to believe the year his grandfather was born. So take a guess. At the end of the video, I'm going to tell you. It's going to shock you. This is a Heartland Sweetheart stove. We've had it for several years and it works great. It's pretty small and compact. There's a lot of different brands. Some are a lot larger. We chose to go with the smaller version. Flue goes out the ceiling, comes in the back of the stove. You have your warming oven. It's heated from the back and from the top, bottom. We have a, uh, behind the stove, we have a heat shield that protects the wall if the stove happens to get too hot. Of course, we have, we have six lids. This being the hottest, the hottest two lids, and they graduate with heat to a little cooler on this side. Back here in the back, we have the oven damper marked closed over here. When we start it, we want it to be in the open position. Of course, you have your single compartment oven. This is the firebox. This is the ash door. Here is the ash tray. I took my ashes out. They need to really go in a metal bucket so uh, there's no hazard of uh, burning your plants. Don't throw your ashes away. They're, they're very nice to put on your garden or fruit trees, but don't just dump them out. Or make wine. <laughs> yeah, you can make lye with it. Lye? Lye, yes. Lye. You can make lye with it. All right. We're gonna start our fire here in a second. Here is two fire dampers over here on the side of the stove. They need to be opened about a quarter of an inch. We also have one damper here in the front of the ash door. This is, I think I like this one the best. Leave it open a little what, about a quarter of an inch also. And you can leave the door open when you get to when you start your fire, I usually just leave this door open. It's easier for me. We're going to open the uh, firebox lid, get a little bit better access to the fire. Maybe you can look down in there and see the grates. Shaking back and forth so that your ashes will dump down into your ash box and not build up and close your fire down. I want to talk to you about your firewood to have a successful burn in your wood cook stove. There is two different kinds of wood, a soft wood, a hard wood. The soft wood is faster burning. The hard wood is slower burning. Soft wood is my number one choice for starting a fire. Since we don't have it in this geographical area, we use a hardwood mesquite. Choose the correct size of firewood that will fit into your wood cook cell. Make sure when you cut your firewood, let it age for six months. Remember, don't put green firewood in your stove. It has a tendency to build up chrysote in your chimney flue, which may cause a fire when it builds up too much. This house has a story about in the 1910s, the roof caught on fire due to that fact. And as you see the T 
10 patches on the ceiling. That's where the fire burnt down through the roof and onto the ceiling before they got the fire out. So that's a hazard. So be careful about what you burn. Always try to keep some firewood under cover so you'll always have some dry firewood to start your fire with. Don't put any firewood that has ice and snow on it. It could damage your stove. Your weather affects the stove. When it's hot and still, you may have a little more trouble starting it. When it's cold and windy, it starts a little easier. Oh, there's a draw knife to peel off shavings for starting my fire with, with whatever wood I have. I use my small hatchet to uh, split my kindling up into finer pieces. This is just a little demonstration. The wood I'm showing you here is too big to get in the stove, so I'm gonna have to split it using a sledgehammer and a wedge. It takes a little longer. Tools you need for your firewood is a draw knife, a hatchet, an ax, uh, a splitter wedge, maybe a sledgehammer to keep your wood to the correct size. We're gonna put a couple of small, medium-sized pieces of wood in there. Uh, we'll put them on either side, make a little, like a little trough. Today, we're gonna to just start with a piece of newspaper. I'll lay the newspaper in. Put a little bit of my shavings on top of the newspaper. Take a little bit of small kindling, place it kind of crossways over the top, back and forth. Leave enough space for air to go through your kindling. What kind of wood is the kindling? This is mesquite this what, morning. The whole thing? All of this is mesquite. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty dense, heavy, hot, hot wood. For this country, it's most, one of the most accessible. See the smoke coming out? You need to shut your oven. I usually shut the fire, fire door a little bit. Open these dampers on the bottom. Your oven damper is open. Okay, so what kind of day outside? The, is it okay. windy? Today is a fairly windy day and cold so we have to worry about we have to worry about heating the cold air that's in our flue so that it'll start the uh, drawing effect hot air rises so keep it hot down here air is going to definitely go out the top the air is going in from the bottom you can see it's smoking just a little bit because I opened this door, but I'm trying to get airflow over the top of the kindling. I'll open the door uh, and let you take a look. See it's starting here in the back, but when you open this fire door up, smoke is coming out. Uh, it smokes, back smokes a little bit. So this door needs to be stopped, be left shut, but you can crack this door slightly when you're starting until you get the kindling caught hold and the flue look warmed up. So why do you open the door? To warm up the let flue? A, let, a, let, a, let more air go in so you can get that flue warmed up and the box warmed up and get your kindling started. You don't want it to die down. If you think you got your kindling started, with a flame going pretty good, see it quit puffing smoke back there. So what's that mean? That the kindling 
that means that the kindling has started and it's it's flaming so it's drawing now it's already started drawing so the flu is warm the flu, the flu is already warm and the air is circulating through already so i'm going to put a little bit larger uh, pieces of wood on the stove see now it's starting dry to catch hold you can see it back smoking shut that lid in it and it stops i'm going to uh, add a little bit bigger wood right now you don't have to add it from the firebox you can do it. yeah don't open no. don't open this anymore all right while this while the fire is getting going in here i'm going to talk to you a little bit about the cycle of airflow Airflow goes in these dampers here at the bottom of the stove. It goes up through those great open grates into the firebox. It goes, it, the wood is burning. It's heating this area right here directly above the firebox fast. With this oven damper open, the fire just goes straight out the oven damper and up through the chimney. It's burning as fast as it can go. We want to close this oven damper off now. The heat is staying in the oven. Now it is circulating around this oven chamber over the tops of these other cooking areas. Then it's going back out another opening in the back of the stove and then up the flue. So we're trying to keep as much heat in the stove as possible to, to heat this oven up. And, it, and we don't have to keep feeding this thing all day long because it's with this oven damper open, it's burning the wood as fast as it can go. And we want to save our wood as much as possible and keep this stove hot, starting to warm everything up. It'll take a while before the coals get really hot. But right now, we can cook eggs, bacon, right here on this top as much as you want. It's ready to go. This is how we maintain our fire throughout the day. Inspect the firebox. Stoke the ashes or the coals a little bit. Then I'm going to shake my ashes out. I'm going to open the firebox dampers a little bit. I'm going to open my oven damper. Let it set for just a few seconds. Let the smoke clear out. Open your door. Notice I'm adding a piece of wood that is the right size for the opening of this stove. Add a few big pieces of wood. Close the box door. Now we're gonna wait a little bit for it to catch fire. Our restocking has caught fire. So now we're ready to close our oven damper. And we're ready to close our firebox dampers. Almost all the way. Now it should last till we get ready to refire it again. All right. Just remember, oxygen feeds the fire. When all the dampers are open, it burns fast. It'll burn up your wood. Close all your dampers off. It'll starve your fire, slow it down. You can maintain heat for a lot longer. Doesn't burn all your wood up. A wood cook stove is very important to homesteading. It boils your water, cooks your food, and heats your house. Remember at the beginning of the video, Karen said that we were gonna tell you when my grandfather was born, uh, 
He was born in Germany in 1876. He immigrated to Texas and I grew up around all this kind of culture and lifestyle. I think it's important. I grew up around these stoves. Uh, one of my aunts cooked on this until in the 1970s. Thank you for watching from our Texas Hill Country Farmstead. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Perfect.